Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi everybody, this is uh, Dr. Ravindra Maradi, Associate Professor in the Department of Biochemistry, Kasturva Medical College, Manipal. Uh, in this uh, hour, I will be discussing about disorders of ammonia metabolism. Before going into the disorders of uh, ammonia metabolism, uh, we have to just uh, look at how ammonia is uh, metabolized major junk of the ammonia is metabolized and excreted in the form of urea in the urea cycle around 86 to 90 percent of uh, ammonia is excreted in the form of urea and this is the major route of excretion of ammonia. Any defect in the enzymes of this urea cycle leads to the uh, disorders. Uh, leads to increased uh, accumulation of ammonia in the body and hyperammonemia. So, first we will see how this is the normal uh, metabolism of ammonia, how ammonia is converted into the urea. <coughs> this uh, ammonia metabolism, uh, uh, the excretion of ammonia, uh, uh, formation of urea takes place in the uh, liver and the reactions of this uh, uh, conversion of uh, ammonia into urea takes place both in the mitochondria as well as cytosol. So, what happens in the first reaction? The ammonia that is produced in the body that uh, 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 in different tissues it comes back to the liver, it may be from the skeletal muscle, it comes to the in the form of alanine or it may be from kidneys, it may be from intestine in the form of free ammonia or most of the tissues they give their um, uh, ammonia uh, uh, to the liver in the form of glutamine. That is the major transport for of the ammonia. They all come to the liver and one of the free ammonia that is donated is from the uh, action of uh, glutaminase and the, from the glutamine from the both in the kidney and uh, uh, intestine or glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme acts on the glutamate in the liver to produce free ammonia. So, this ammonia is one of the source of nitrogen of the urea. Urea has got two nitrogens, two amide groups and one of the amide group comes from this free ammonia. That combines with the carbon, monox carbon dioxide in the presence of uh, ATP to form carbamyl phosphate and ATP is converted into to ADP and PI. The enzyme required for this action is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. So, when we say carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1, there is another enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase 2 that is present in the pyrimidine metabolism. And this enzyme is activated by N acetyl glutamate. N acetyl glutamate is the obligate activator of this carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. What do you mean by obligate activator? Obligate activator means without the presence of this, this enzyme will not work. Like the key of your car, without key the car will not start like that. Without this n glutamate, this enzyme will not work and ammonia is not converted into carbamyl phosphate. In the next reaction, carbamyl phosphate combines with ornithine to form citrulline uh, in the presence of the enzyme ornithine trans carbamylase. This enzyme forms converts carbamyl phosphate plus 
ornithine to form citrulline and this citrulline comes out of the mitochondria into the cytosol. In the cytosol it combines with the aspartate. Aspartate is the donor of second nitrogen of urea. The first donor of nitrogen is the free ammonia that is from glutamine or glutamate by the action of glutamate dehydrogenase and uh, or glutaminase that is from the glutamine and the second nitrogen comes from this aspartate. This aspartate combines with citrogenine to form arginino-succinate and requires a uh, ATP and the enzyme required is arginosuccinate synthetase. Then arginosuccinate acted upon by arginosuccinate lyase enzyme to form arginine and fumarate and this arginine is hydrolyzed by the enzyme arginase to form all important molecule urea and resynthesis of ornithine and this ornithine goes back into the mitochondria and the cycle will continue. So, ornithine is a byproduct that is produced and the it is reutilized again like the oxaloacetate that is produced in the TCA cycle that is how it is reutilized similarly ornithine is utilized and the urea produced is dumped into the blood and taken up by the kidney and excreted in the urine. And this fumarate can be converted back into malate, malate will converted back into oxaloacetate and then by the transamination reaction uh, oxaloacetate is converted into aspartate again it can be reutilized. This is the normal uh, uh, conversion of this uh, ammonia into urea that is urea cycle. Any defect in one of the enzymes it causes uh, disorders related to this urea cycle. We will see one by one <coughs> before that why this uh, disorder as I already mentioned there may be a genetic deficiency of any one of the enzymes of the urea cycle that leads causes this disorders and most common one is the ornithine transcarbamylase deficiency that is the second enzyme of urea cycle is the most common deficiency seen in this uh, disorders. And what happens if there is an enzyme deficiency what happens? The problem that is happening is the ammonia is not converted into urea especially the first two enzymes are very very important because it increases the blood ammonia level and as you all know that ammonia is very toxic it increases the body pH and crosses the blood brain barrier and uh, it causes lot of problem like uh, cerebral edema, convulsions, coma, death can happen with this. So, the usually this genetic disorders deficiencies occur early in the life of the newborn and uh, 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 that causes increase in the ammonia level in the blood that is hyperammonemia. So, in the first week of uh, few weeks of life these uh, signs and symptoms will be observed and the uh, babies will suffer from vomiting and uh, uh, cannot eat properly failure to thrive and protein intolerance because if you take more protein rich diet there will be more amino acid load, more amino acid catabolism, more load of ammonia to be detoxified and it causes the intermittent ataxia, irritability, lethargy, mental retardation and if not retired coma and death. That is why uh, these disorders are very very important to diagnose early in the life and uh, start treatment because you can prevent this all the mental retardation and other things. <coughs> so, what are the disorders? The first uh, disorder that can happen if you have seen that normal metabolism of this ammonia. So, you just uh, put a block in this reaction first reaction is ammonia is converted okay, into carbamyl phosphate by combining with carbon dioxide and uh, ATP by the enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. If you just put a block in this reaction 
what happens? This ammonia is not converted into carbamyl phosphate. The ammonia level will increase and if the ammonia level will increase and it packs up glutamate, glutamine is also level increases in the blood and uh, if you look at the blood picture, urea is not synthesized and uh, blood urea nitrogen level decreases and this is called hyperammonemia type 1. As the name indicates, the disorder name hyper means increased, emia means in the blood, ammonia. Increased ammonia level in the blood is caused due to the deficiency of the first enzyme of urea cycle that is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1. So, this disorder is called hyperammonemia type 1. Next is second reaction is carbamyl phosphate combines with ornithine to form citrulline by the enzyme ornithine trans carbamylase. If you just put a block here, what happens carbamyl phosphate will not be converted into citrulline and increases the level of carbamyl phosphate and also uh, accumulation of this leads to increase ammonia, increase glutamine and decrease in the production of the blood urea nitrogen. So, this disorder is called hyperammonemia type 1. It is similar to type 1, but this type 2 it uh, differs in this is there is accumulation of this carbamyl phosphate that spills over and comes into the cytosol and this enters into another cycle, another pathway that is going on in the cytosol that is pyrimidine metabolism and that it increases the level of orotic acid. So, when you can, uh, how you can differentiate between type 1 and type 2 is the presence of orotic acid in the increased orotic acid in the blood or in the urine, orotic acid urea that differentiates between hyperammonemia type 1 and type 2. In type 2 deficiency, you see orotic acid urea, but not in type 1 deficiency. Next, the enzymes that are present in the cytosol, citrulline combines with aspartate, which is the donor of the second nitrogen and citrulline combines with aspartate to form arginino-succinate and the enzyme required is arginino-succinate synthetase it requires an ATP molecule and if you put a block in this reaction, citrulline starts accumulating, it will not convert into arginino-succinate and this disorder is called increased citrulline, is called citrulline emia. Okay. This citrulline emia is the third disorder of this ammonia metabolism. Then the next is arginino-succinate is Liased by hydro, uh, con, uh, converted into fumarate and arginine by the enzyme arginino-succinate lyase. And here the aspartate don after donating the nitrogen is converted into fumarate and uh, you get the arginine here. And the, if you put a block in this arginino-succinate is not converted into arginine. So, this disorder is called arginino succinic aciduria increase acidemia leading to aciduria arginino succinate level increases in blood and then spills over into the urine okay this is the fourth disorder of ammonia metabolism and the last one is arginine is uh, acted upon by arginase hydrolysis of this arginine takes place to form urea and ornithine and if you put a block here, what happens? Arginine level increases in the blood and this is called arginine hemia. The first two reactions that are taking place in the mitochondria are very important. They are more severe in nature compared to the downstream enzyme deficiency because some amount of citrulline form that contains some nitrogen that can be excreted in the body. So, hyperammonemia type 1 and type 2 are very, very important. As I told already, 
hyper ammonemia type 2 is very very common. So, we will see in little bit in detail and ornithine trans carbamylase enzyme deficiency causes hyper ammonemia type 2. Symptoms is increase in ammonia level in the blood, it causes increase in glutamine level because urea is not formed, blood urea nitrogen decreases and there is aurotic aciduria because carbamyl phosphate that is accumulated spills over into cytosol to be used in another pathway that is taking place in the cytosol is uh, pyrimidine metabolism and it causes cerebral edema, lethargy, convulsions, coma and death. So, uh, what is the reason to explain already I told ammonia carbon dioxide combining forms carbamyl phosphate by carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 then it goes into the urea cycle citrulline is formed by ornithine trans carbamylase and next reactions forms urea. So, if there is a problem in this uh, second reaction ok if you put a x mark here what happens carbamyl phosphate is not converted into citrulline and increase in carbamyl phosphate level spills over into pyrimidine synthesis and increases orotic acid synthesis and this is the distinguished feature of hyperammonemia type 1 and type 2. If you see orotic aciduria this is hyperammonemia type 2 without orotic aciduria that is hyperammonemia type 1. To summarize, so we have seen 5 disorders first 2 are in the mitochondria and next 3 are in the cytosol among them most common is type 2 disorder and these are the defective enzymes in uh, and uh, what is the main substrate that is accumulated. And here in hyperammonemia type 1 the defect is carbamyl phosphate synthetase 1 and then the accumulated substrates are ammonia and glutamine. In type 2 or within tars carbamylase deficiency ammonia is increased, glutamine is increased, carbamyl phosphate level increases and that sp sp uh, spills into pyrimidine synthetic pathway to produce increased orotic acid also. In citrullinemia, the defective enzyme is arginosuccinate synthetase, citrulline level increases and it can get excreted into urine. Arginosuccinic aciduria, the enzyme deficiency is arginosuccinate lyase and the substrate accumulated is arginosuccinate and the last disorder is arginemia acted upon by arginase and the accumulated substrate is arginine. I hope uh, this uh, lecture will help you to understand the disorders associated with ammonia metabolism. Thank you.